Good afternoon, everybody. This is Susan, and I'm going to work on a little watercolor sketch. It's actually based on a plein air painting I had done at Ripa Villa Plantation in Spring Hill. But we're going to work on it today in watercolor. And you can kind of see we're already got started a little bit. I thought this paper was pre-stretched. Cold pressed paper. So I didn't pre-stretch um, my paper and block it. And it's beginning to bubble a little bit. So that tells me I need to prepare the paper better. Um, if you've never been to Ripa Villa, it's gorgeous, especially this time of year. But this barn that is right behind the main house, the mansion, is um, original to the place. So I always love love painting it. You can see I've already gotten started um, with a beautiful background. I want it to dry a little bit before I go forward. But anyway, um, I used a darker, cooler uh, blue up here at the... Um, Zenith, and then switch to a uh, uh, a warmer blue, warmer and lighter blue down here near the horizon, and kind of blended those together, and went back with a paper towel and kind of blotted it out. And um, so now we're getting ready to get started on another piece. I'm going to try to do. Um, see here let's let's do a piece that doesn't touch the sky so we don't have any blending and I'm gonna go with a beautiful um, acid green spring green and I want to use a lot of water to move that around you might even notice where I'm skipping some places because there is a beautiful cast shadow. And I wanted to um, leave that for a darker, cooler green. And if you're not familiar with temperature of color, um, I actually had never heard of temperature of color until probably about 10 years ago uh, when I joined the Chestnut Group. And they're a group of plain air painters based in Middle Tennessee. And they had this workshop uh, series called Paint Your Heart Out. And it was a fundraiser for the Chestnut Group. And even if you're not a member, you can, you can register for one of the classes. And I took a Kim Barrett class. I just love her work. Her work's at Loblolly in Columbia. And it's just so gorgeous. It just inspired me to... Um, get into plain air and I've never regretted that decision. I believe, well I actually don't believe it, I know it, the, um, the Chestnut Group typically when I joined eight years ago the Paint Your Heart Out was in the um, in the spring and then a few years ago they switched it to September and we did that for a few years and I think last year they had it in the spring and in September and this year they're doing it in the spring so um, I'm actually going to be teaching one of those workshops it's going to be on May 31st at Ripa Villa and um, your fee and everything includes a tour of the mansion and we'll be painting all day and we'll be doing a travel journal which is so much fun I need to I should have had my travel journal out to show you but anyway I'll do that on another another video but what I did here is I started with my I should have blocked the paper which I didn't but um, let's say we do that over and we'd block the paper I used just a regular pencil um, just to lightly sketch in my basic shapes and sometimes I'll even go back and erase a little bit because the watercolor by nature is transparent and you really don't want those pencil marks showing through and if they do then we can always go with pen and ink over it and make it into a different kind of painting 
And so I went ahead and did the basic shape. Now we're just um, scrubbing in the, the different colors. And I wanted to do a real nice, warm, light spring green down here um, on the grass. But I want to go a lot darker and a lot cooler for... Um, My cast shadows and I might even have to go back I didn't get my green in there and I don't believe that's dark enough so what I might do is mix a color here so if we can get it a little bit darker that's a little too black let me add a little yellow um, actually let me add a little bit of green yeah, there we go. And even this could be darker. I taught a plain air class at Ripavilla. Gosh, this was um, several years ago. And did a plain air painting of the barn. And um, this is loosely based on, on that painting. Right. Love that. Okay, where to next? Um, I think I want to go down into the trees and I don't want to paint every branch and especially as those um, those branches get thinner and thinner and thinner that go out toward the end. To me, it looks a little purple. So I'm going to yeah, we may even, I may even put a little brown in there. Too brown. I got this particular set. That might even be too dark. I got this particular set of watercolor at um, Michael's. But I've noticed that Walmart has the same set and they're about the same price. They're about, it's about $5. Nobody should be unable to paint due to finances. I'm telling you, we can get you set up for about 10 bucks on a watercolor set. Of course, it only, um, oh, it's, it's the gateway drug. Watercolor is the great gateway drug to painting. I'm not sure how many watercolor sets I have. I've got a travel set, and I've even got a set that's not even really watercolor. It's um, let's find it. It's the Charbon Paris water soluble pastel painting sticks. But what I love about this, other than it says Paris on there, which is kind of a bucket list item for me is look how beautiful the packaging is I love that even the box itself look it's not even complete box and you open that up you've got all these wonderful colors that are really just soft pastels but they're water soluble so I could use those as um, as watercolor if I wanted to which I could do now but um, I'm going to be using this reference painting in a class coming up and we're only going to be using these particular sets so I'm just going to stick with that. Okay, I'll try a little bit. And we might go a little browner as we come in. This was very early in the spring, and the leaves were beginning to bud out, but they weren't completely. 
we may put a little green in there later, but right now we're just going to do this nice little thin wash. I'm going to add some dark back here on my uprights. We've got several things going on back here that are the tree line, obviously. Okay, that's beginning to develop. I like that. And we might want to get a little bit of blue in the trees, what they call sky holes. And I may have missed my opportunity to get those in. Only because, unlike oils or... um. acrylics you can't really paint over watercolor you make a mistake it's pretty much there to live with and yes I use my fingers a lot at least that'll intimate that there's some blue in there. Maybe a little bit in this tree too. But these are kind of mushed together so it really won't show up in that one at all. Soften that where I just made a mistake. Alrighty. Probably too soon to be putting some detail in here. Okay, we are literally watching paint dry right now, which I realize is very boring. Okay, now let's see what we've got going on here. 
my little bit of the barn color in. And it's kind of a the barn itself is actually pretty gray. I wonder if that's too wet. This may be a mistake. It's the roof. dark enough but I'll just see here there's kind of a cast shadow under here just a little bit under there actually I don't think that's the cast shadow I think that is actually the under part of that roof So we're going to, from our vantage point, we're actually going to see that a little bit more on this side. So I'm going to make that a little bit wider on this side. There we go. And then the barn itself is a little bluish gray. I've got a little bit of white watercolor here, and I don't use white for white. I use the paper to be my white, but I'm going to mix up some blue and um, white. Kind of make this little gray color. darker color. pigment there. That's okay. I really like going light first and then building up the color. And I'm using the pan watercolor. I love that so much more than the um, the tube. I mean, you can take it on a plane. It travels well. Let me put a little bit of that black under here. More. 
Here we go. been putting this decision off for a while. The day I was there, the cast shadow from this overhang actually went all the way to here. But I've been out there before and the cast shadow is only so far and it really is gorgeous when you're not doing it quite so deep. But I've already put some cast shadow here. So I feel like I might have to remain consistent or it's not going to look right. Um, I think what I'm going to do is go with my first thought. And that is to do the cast shadow only out to about right here. Okay, I'm going to switch brushes to a smaller brush because I want to do some detail in this little quilt. I might put a little more color in the door. I might put a little more color in the barn. Um, I know I want to put in a few more little details here plus the Plus the sweet little little fence we have out here. If you can hear my dog snoring, I feel like I need to explain that. He sleeps all the time. Got another dog outside. And then... The third one is around here somewhere, but I'm not sure where. I'm going to darken that up just a little bit. Sometimes I have a fourth one, but my little foster, Otis, got adopted on Sunday, so I'm without Otis right now. And then before Otis was a little Chewini that got adopted.
Now where that red goes into the cast shadow, we're going to have to darken that. I may have darkened it a little too much, but I might go back and darken that cast shadow a little bit too. Mm, I don't want it as dark as under the roof line. Oh, I just goofed on that. No problem. Too dark. Gotta fix that. The doors are darker. I don't want them too dark. I may add a little bit of this dark green in there. Of course, I might regret that too. So let's just see what happens. No, I think I like that. dark in there and that's going to be hard to fix. So let me take a 